Hello, everyone. My name is Ben Kalinsnik. I'm a senior manager with British Columbia's Trade Policy and Negotiations Branch of the Ministry of Jobs, Economic Recovery and Innovation. Annyeonghaseyo, British Columbia e Jongbu eso ilhago inen Ben Kalinsnik imnida. Good evening to everyone in BC and good morning to those joining us from South Korea. Before I go any further, I want to acknowledge that I am conducting this webinar from the traditional territories of the Lepongan speaking peoples, the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. There are two parts of our virtual event. In the first, we are going to see two short videos to launch the latest action plan between Gyeonggi Province and British Columbia which you may not be aware are actually sister provinces. The second part of today's event is a webinar on doing business in South Korea. Our main objectives are to provide you with market intel on South Korea, to raise awareness about how the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement, also known as the CKFTA, can reduce your costs and make your goods and services more competitive, uh, give an overview of BC-Korea trade relations, what BC's trade and investment reps in Korea and the Export Navigator program can do for you. Today's session is being recorded and will be shared with registrants in a follow-up email along with the presentations that you see today and speaker contact information. If you experience any problems with your audio or any other technical issues, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen and let Christine Chen or me know about your issue. You may also use the Q&A function to pose questions for speakers at any time throughout the event, and there will be time at the end for additional questions. Please be as specific as you can and indicate where possible who you are directing your question to. Now I would like to introduce our first video. As you saw in our program, the Honorable Ravi Kalon, BC's Minister of Jobs, Economic Recovery, Innovation was originally scheduled to provide these remarks, but he was unfortunately committed to another event today. However, we are very thankful that the Honorable George Chow, BC's Minister of State for Trade, was able to step in and provide these remarks to kick off the Gyeonggi Province, BC Action Plan for Cooperation and today's webinar on doing business in Korea. So enjoy the video. Good day, everyone. My name is George Cha. I'm, I'm the Minister of State for Trade for the Government of British Columbia. I'm pleased to speak to you from Vancouver on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish peoples, with whom we share this land and their hospitality. Thank you for inviting me to say a few words. Before I begin, I would like to sincerely thank the Assistant Governor of this for his kind words and support as British Columbians deal with the ongoing impact of the recent extreme weather events. And for his well wishes to our Premier John Horgan, who is thankfully back at work with us at the legislature after undergoing cancer treatment. Since the signing of our sister city relationship in 2008, 14 years ago, British Columbia and Gangi province have maintained strong ties through trade, investment, and collaboration. The government of British Columbia is excited to strengthen this partnership going forward and increase trade to support mutual economic growth and promote culture, arts, education, and sports. Like the successful winter sport exchange that was carried out in late 2019 at Silver Star Resort in Vernon, in which elite Korean cross-country skiers trained with Cross Country Ski Canada and athletes from BC for one week. Exchanges like this show that we can learn so much from one another in many areas of life, and that by working together, we can reach new heights. As we look to continue our strong economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement provides a great framework for continued economic growth with South Korea. With our Clean BC program, we are supporting people and businesses to transition to a carbon neutral economy and welcoming to our province some of the top clean technology companies in the world. We look forward to continue our collaboration in the Gangi province 
which is home to some of the world's most recognizable brands like Samsung, Hyundai, and Kia. British Columbia looks forward to welcoming representatives from the Gangi government when it's safe to do so. I would again like to thank Assistant Governor of Gangi Province, Mr. Yu Kuan Yu, and all of the guests and members who are joining us today on the webinar. Thank you for taking your time. Okay. That's uh, our first video from Minister Chow. I know he regrets that he cannot be here in person, but we thank him for taking the time to create that welcome video. Uh, it's nice to know that BC and Gyeonggi Province can continue to build on the relationship as sister provinces and work together towards mutually beneficial outcomes. Next, we have another video for you, uh, this time with welcoming remarks and a virtual signing of the Gyeonggi Province BC Agreement by Mr. Ryu Guangyol, Assistant Governor, Gyeonggi Province. Mr. Ryu previously served as Director General of the Labour Office. He promotes the development of Gyeonggi's small and medium-sized enterprises and formulates innovative SME policies in line with rapidly evolving global issues such as carbon neutrality and digital transformation. Enjoy this next video. Anyashmika, 경기도와 브리티시 콜롬비아주는 2008년 자매결혼을 체결한 이래 대표단 상호 방문, 경제통상, 디지털 콘텐츠, 스포츠, 인적 교류 등 꾸준히 다양한 분야에서 교류 협력을 진행하여 왔습니다. 양 지역 간의 지속적인 교류와 협력에 대해 다시 한번 감사의 말씀을 드리며 근본 제4차 자매결혼 실행 계획을 체결하게 된 것을 매우 뜻깊게 생각합니다. 경기도는 한국의 ICT, 경제, 문화, 관광 부문을 선도하는 지방정부로서 삼성, LG, 현대, 기아 등 세계적인 반도체, 휴대폰, 자동차 기업들과 유망 중소기업, 스타트업이 밀집하고 있으며 한편으로는 유네스코 세계문화유산, DMZ 등 특별한 관광 자원이 풍부한 지역입니다. 브리티시 콜롬비아주는 친환경 기술, 정보통신 기술, 농식품 등 여러 분야에서 선도적인 지역이라고 알고 있습니다. 이러한 양 지역의 강점을 바탕으로 제4차 자매결연 실행계획 협약에 있는 경제통상, 문화예술, 스포츠, 재난안전, 교육, 노동뿐만 아니라 더 나아가 여러 분야에서 더욱 실질적이고 활발한 협력이 이루어지기를 기대합니다. 경기도는 브리티시 콜롬비아 주와의 자매관계를 매우 중요하게 생각하고 있습니다. 브리티시 콜롬비아 주는 한국 전쟁에 참전하여 한국의 자유와 평화를 위해 싸웠던 오랜 우방 지역입니다. 캐나다에서 유일한 경기도의 자매결연 지역이기도 합니다. 앞으로도 양 지역은 역사적, 경제적 유대뿐만 아니라 문화, 예술, 교육 등 많은 분야에서 강한 연대를 함께하길 기대합니다. 마지막으로 이번 4차 실행 계획 체결을 통해 양 지역 간 파트너십이 더욱 강화되기를 기대하면서 코로나19가 조속히 종식되고 해외 여행이 재개되어 직접 만나 협력 사업을 논의할 수 있게 되길 희망합니다. 다시 한번 경기도 브리티시 콜롬비아주 4차 실행 계획 체결식에 참석하신 라비 칼론 일자리 경제 회복 혁신부 장관님과 관계자분들께 감사드립니다. 이번 제4차 실행계획 체결은 양 지역의 공동 비전 구축에 큰 밑거름이 될 것으로 확신합니다. 감사합니다.
Outstanding. Thank you very much to our friends and partners in the Gyeonggi Do office for that fantastic video. Okay, so that concludes the first part of today's event. Um, the next thing I want to do is introduce our next speaker. Mr. Gum Cholwan is the Director of the Foreign Affairs and Trade Division of Gyeonggi Province. He previously served as the Director of the Investment Promotion Division. Over the past four years, he has organized many market pioneering projects, including Gyeonggi's participation in the Consumer Electronics Show 2022, which saw over 15 million US dollars in consultations for companies of the province. Thank you, Director Gum, for joining us today. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, actually, uh, uh, it is in the morning in Korea. <laughs> but uh, uh, first of all, I'm sorry for your uh, natural disasters such as the flood and uh, uh, landsliding. Uh, uh, but uh, I would like to express uh, your uh, honor, is you, uh, your uh, relentless uh, uh, endeavor to overcome the disasters. Uh, my name is Torangum. Uh, I'm charge of uh, for foreign affairs and the trade division in Gyeonggi provincial government. Uh, I would like to congratulate uh, both the regions for holding this uh, signing ceremony for the fourth Gyeonggi, Gyeonggi BC action plan and for hosting the web webinar on doing business in South Korea under the Canada Korea Free Trade Agreement. Uh, building on the first three, uh, three action plan implemented by our two regions, we are continuing to our collaborative efforts and the expanding cooperation in uh, diverse sec sectors, such as sustainable building technologies, renewable energy, digital media content, agri-food, and more. For the moral, the solidarity and the strong bonds enjoyed by our two regions are being further strengthened and reinforced through reciprocal visits and personal exchanges. This webinar is on doing business in South Korea. It's very timely and meaningful as it actually helps for the COVID-19 affiliated economic sectors of both the region. Seven years have passed since the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement came into force. With active trade and the reciprocal uh, investment, our inter-regional inter cooperation and the economic ties will be further strengthened. Gyeonggi province uh, as a massive marketplace is a home to globally renowned high-tech uh, companies as well as 25% of Korean population. Welcome to the entry of diverse Canadian uh, companies through the Canada Korea Free Trade agreement. Uh, finally, uh, this is a, a famous Korean saying that goes even rivers and mountains change after 10 years. However, for the 14 years, we have enjoyed the continuing cooperation and the enduring friendship of British Columbia and uh, Gyeonggi province. For this, we are truly grateful. With today's webinar, we anticipate even greater inter-regional exchanges and the cooperation in the future. For the next webinar, we look forward to hosting an event that supports the entry by many companies of Gyeonggi province into the markets of British Columbia and cooperation with BC companies. I also hope uh, uh, we would like to hold a face-to-face -face meeting uh, soon after the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Gum. You've uh, given our attendees a lot to consider already and we appreciate you uh, taking the time to join us today. Okay, uh, our next speaker is Derek Kim. Derek is a British Columbia raised, 
Korean Canadian and is Senior Commercial Officer for Trade and Invest British Columbia in South Korea, co-located in the Canadian Embassy in Seoul. Having served the interests of British Columbians for more than five years, Derek is currently responsible for all sector foreign direct investment and trade promotion in clean tech, energy, ocean marine, and other reactive sectors such as forestry, mining, and mining tech. Uh, all of that between South Korea and the province. It's a lot to handle. Derek is going to talk about market intel, sector trends, and business practices in South Korea. Welcome, Derek. Too bad, I'm not sharing my slides. Jeez. Okay, great. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Derek Kim. I'm the Senior Commercial uh, Officer at Trade Investment BC in South Korea, uh, co-located in the Canadian Embassy in Seoul. I'm very much honored to speak at today's session, uh, doing business in South Korea, covering market intelligence, sector trends, and business practices. Um, today's agenda comprises of three parts, introduction of Korea, market trends and opportunities, and some of the business practices. I'm really hoping that these will be helpful for you when you decide to engage in any business relationship with South Korea. First, introduction of South Korea. In this slide, you may recognize many of the words that Korea is known for. Particularly, you will recognize what we call K-wave or Hallyu, the culture economy of music, movies, sports, food, and some of the global brands. All this is to say, South Korea is known as one of the most innovative countries in the world, labeled as the world's most innovative country on the Bloomberg Innovation Index 2021. They say Korea has no resources, but human resources. Truly after Japanese invasion from 1910 to 1945, Korean War broke from 1950 to 53, dividing the nation into two. From the ashes of war, Korea was one of the poorest country on earth. GDP per capita below $100, lower than Haiti, Ethiopia, or Yemen. After 70 years, South Korea is now recognized as the world's fastest growing developed country, placing itself at the 10th GDP ranks in the OECD and G20, all thanks to its hardworking and diligent people. To go over some of the general information on Korea, Korea's capital is Seoul, where more than 50% of total population, 25 million people live. It is one hundredth of Canada's total area, but known for world-class technology, cultural richness, and 5,000 years of history. Korea is a democratic republic state with presidential government elected every five years. And we're the world leader in internet connectivity 92% of the country's total population are connected, fastest speed of LTE and 5G. Korea's political environment can be described as rather young, but modern democracy. Korea is known for Chaebol, who owns global conglomerates such as Samsung, LG, SK, and Hyundai, who usually form a close link with political leaders, particularly the running government. As mentioned prior, Korea has powerful presidency elected only once and lasts for five years. Interesting enough, we'll expect to have our presidential election on March 9th, only less than a month away. As the world's 10th largest economy, 14 Korean companies are recognized in 14 Global 500 in 2020, including Samsung, Hyundai, SK, POSCO, LG, CZ, and GS groups, with a clear positioning globally as positive economic environment. Okay, so to sum up, eight quick facts of Korea that would be helpful for you to remember. First, total population is 52 million, of which 50% uh, live in Seoul. So you can just imagine how high the population density must be. Second, we have a highly developed tech infrastructure. Korea is home to the fastest internet on the planet, as I mentioned. GDP, at the average growth of 2.7%, Korea's 10th largest global economy. Uh, fourth, Korea is a great place for consumer testing. Koreans are early adopters of new technologies and always eager to be the first to buy and use newly released technologies. Fifth, 70% of 24 to 35 years olds have completed some sort of 
uh, tertiary education, uh, which is the highest percentage worldwide compared to OECD average of 44%. Six, English is mandatory language, uh, second language in Korean education system. So therefore, most Koreans have reasonable levels of English. Seventh, Korea currently has FTAs with 58 countries and under negotiation with 24 countries, with aims to be the most globally connected trade and investment partner. Eighth, Korea is home to a global brand that you recognize, such as Samsung, LG, Hyundai, and Postco. Okay, so now moving on to the market trends and opportunities. In comparison to that of British Columbia, you can remember tenfold. So total area of land that is one tenth of BC, but 10 times of population. South Korea is BC's fourth largest export market. In 2020, BC export to South Korea has reached $2.1 billion, accounting for 5.4% share of BC origin export destination after US, China, and Japan. Canada is an important trading partner for South Korea, and 50% of its total exports are from British Columbia. In 2020, Korean government announced Carbon Neutral Plan 2050 to achieve bold targets of carbon neutrality including scrapping coal-fired power plants. Similarly, Metro Vancouver is home to many clean tech companies and hub for hydrogen and fuel cell industry, which is testimonial to our clean BC mandate to reach net zero target by 2050 as well. Both BC and Korea acknowledge high potential for digital transformation and the digital economy. Marking the year 2022 as the eighth year of Canada-Korea free trade agreement, bilateral trade between the two countries have become ever so strong. More information will be explained by Ben in his presentation later. In April, South Korea is planning to join the CPTPP, Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, which accounts for 15% of the world's trade, where Canada is already a member of. To explain Korea's key industries. Uh, first, manufacturing, semiconductors, automobiles, chemicals, steel making, ships and vessels. Second, technology, electronics, mobile phones, digital displays, cosmetics, and biotech. And third, creative contents, K music, K dramas, K movies, gaming, and webtoons. Some of the brand names resulted from these are mentioned in the previous slides, such as BTS, Samsung, and Squid Game, as you probably know. Since the COVID-19 hit, South Korea has quick to adopt some of the global economic trends. The current Moon government has introduced $170 billion New Deal, of which $77 billion are to be invested in green economy, such as renewable energy of ammonia and hydrogen, and clean technology of EV batteries and fuel cells. Of course, all these directions may well change after 2022 presidential election, where all conglomerates will adhere to. The rise of Korean millennials and Generation Z shaping more than 75% global workforces by 2025 have led the drastic transformation from the traditional outlets to e-commerce and digital platforms proven to be the key game changers. Also, a noteworthy point that they are also relying on influencers and content making heavily in terms of their purchase decisions. Further, these generations have led more socially conscious lifestyle, which businesses have quickly learned to apply. This has led to ESG, environment social governance focused business practices <clears throat> and value investments. Naturally, large conglomerates follow suit, shifting away from the risky and rather bold commodity investments to form their own corporate venture capital, CVCs, to enter the world of startups, acquiring, partnering with them for technology advancement and venture off new streams of businesses, which is positively backed by financial institutions and government alike. In recognizing the aforementioned trends, our trade investment British Columbia office have, uh, we have nine priority sectors to comprehensively cover what? The value added part, energy, consumer goods, agri-food, seafood, how? The technology, life sciences, digital entertainment, interactive media, 
clean technology, and why the future, AR, VR, metaverse, agri-tech, and ICT. And we also have reactive sectors from forestry, mining, to ocean marine, aerospace, international education, tourism, and culture. Now moving on to our last portion of the presentation, business practices. Korea has thousands of years of history heavily influenced by Confucius ideology. So this means that you have to always respect the elders who can be by their age or simply by their business ranks or power with utmost politeness. So I have prepared some do's and don'ts for you to remember. First, do not fold, pocket, or write on business cards in front of the giver. Use the Remember app, which is pretty much the business norm in Korea. And also remember that Koreans use Kakao and Line and never, never WeChat and others. Uh, do keep business cards face up on the table, put them delicately into business card holder if possible. Do slightly bow as a form of salutation and handshakes are avoided during COVID-19 as you can imagine. Do accept things using your two hands. Do not refuse tea or beverages, snacks being offered. And lastly, do email the senior decision makers only at the final state of the project instead of assisting them her along the way. Normally, the final approval, approval is important to be addressed to the senior person after it has been progressed. Do not give gifts more than Canadian dollars $100 as it is against Kim Young nan Act, which is anti-graft law. Uh, please remember 30, 50, 100 roll if possible. So food, drinks, and snacks are permitted up to 30,000 Korean won. Gifts up to a value of 50,000 Korean won are accepted. Congratulatory condolences money, flowers, and rest are up to 100,000 uh, 100, Korean won. And if you can, please learn uh, Korean basic words in a formal setting. First, 안녕하세요. Hello. 감사합니다. Thank you. 안녕히 계세요. Goodbye. And more words, <laughs> and more words can we can uh, try to introduce you later. So as an ending remark, I'd like to share a quote from President Moon of South Korea. He said, what style Korea has built from the ashes of Korean War, economic culture flourishment, and a true democracy is all indebted to the miracle on the Han River. So should you decide to pursue your businesses in South Korea, may our trade and investment BC representatives and Gyeonggi-do would help you to experience that very miracle. For further questions and inquiries, please contact our office. Thank you. Thank you very much, Derek. <clears throat> okay, that, those were some great insights and uh, hopefully our attendees can uh, leverage VCs in market presence. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that they can use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen to pose questions for, for uh, panelists uh, at any time. Uh, please limit uh, the chat to uh, just any technical questions you may have. The next uh, pres presentation is actually from me, so I will just uh, wait for that uh, to, to come up here. Excellent, thank you very much, Christine. So as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, I'm, I work with Trade Policy and Negotiations Branch, and this branch represents BC's interests in both international and domestic free trade agreement negotiations, as well as trade disputes affecting British Columbia. We do free trade agreement outreach, just like this webinar to ensure that information on how to take advantage of FTAs is widely known. We know that most SMEs don't have the time to navigate FTAs, so hopefully this overview can 
at least help you understand where to start if you're wondering what the CKFTA can do for you. Uh, next slide, please. So it's been mentioned, I think, a couple of times already, but uh, the CKFTA actually entered into force on January 1st, 2015. So it's now entering into its eighth year. And the uh, Derek also mentioned this, Canada-Korea trade has really expanded quite significantly during this time. And um, it, this is surely in part because of the benefits that can be found under the CKFTA. This was Canada's first FTA in the Asia Pacific. Before that, BC and Canadian companies were really at a disadvantage, and that is because the EU and the US already had deals with South Korea. So this deal was very important for putting you on, an, uh, on a level playing field with many of your international competitors. The agreement itself contains 23 chapters and you know, hundreds and thousands of pages, uh, multiple annexes covering both uh, traditional and modern areas of trade. So uh, it covers things like goods and services and investment, uh, which are some things that you will find in many of Canada's, well, all of Canada's FTAs, but it also contains more modern aspects of the economic partnership. Uh, things like e-commerce, for example. Next slide, please. Okay, let's dive right into some of the, uh, the, the provisions of this agreement. The first area that I'll cover uh, is goods. Now, goods, uh, goods market access, uh, what we're really talking about here, first of all, is tariff cuts and elimination. These, of course, can reduce your costs and make your products more competitive. Since January 1st, 2021, 98.5% of Canada's exports are eligible for duty-free access into Korea. And uh, we should have some updated figures for 2022 very soon to provide as well, but know that that number continues to go up uh, the further that the agreement gets implemented. Upon full implementation of the agreement, uh, tariffs, Korean tariffs on Canadian goods, 99.75% uh, of those uh, exports to Korea will be uh, duty-free. So another thing to take note of when it comes to duties uh, and tariff eliminations uh, is that these take place on January 1st of each year. Uh, under the agreement, uh, in some cases, uh, duties were removed immediately. Uh, in other cases, there were phase-out periods. And so under those periods, under those phase-outs each year, you may see uh, a reduced duty until they're eliminated altogether. Next slide, please. I know that this is a very busy looking slide and I, I don't uh, certainly don't expect anyone to uh, read and digest everything that is here. Um, but, you know, the main message that I, that I want to communicate here is, you know, if, if somebody told you uh, before the agreement was being implemented that uh, tariffs of 100% of on things like animal feed would be eliminated by 2024 under the agreement uh, and that your, your animal feed would be that much cheaper uh, than competitors who don't have that kind of preferential access. Well, that's a very compelling reason to, to explore uh, the market. Um, tar now, we have to remember that tariff reductions can also reduce the cost of your imports as well. So under this agreement, you may be fine that you can bring in technology, for example, from, from South Korea um, at a lower price and saving you money uh, in the end. I know we have producers from a wide range of industries and sectors uh, with us today. These are just a few examples of, of tariff reductions under the CKFTA. Uh, there are, it, what this shows you uh, really are that the tariffs were quite significant before the agreement uh, came into place in many cases. Um, but it also shows you that many have already been eliminated. And as I said, over the next few years, many more will be removed altogether. Uh, I think one thing I would add here is that you know, there is one area where there are some remaining tariffs, and that is definitely in the agri food and seafood space. However, uh, those are reduced and, and continue to go to go lower. So we can talk about some specific examples if that's if that's of interest to you. Um, the other point that I would make here is that these rates they, they may look great, but 
they really look much better when you consider them in contrast with the other rates that are available to those countries or producers in those other countries that don't have a free trade agreement with Korea. Um, so Korea, just like all countries, has what is called a most favored nation rate, and that is available to all of those producers from countries where those FPAs are not available. Uh, when you compare them uh, with these rates, um, it really shows you where your competitive edge is. Uh, next slide, please. Here are just a few more examples uh, um, based on uh, different sectors. Um, again, I'll just give you a second to, to take a look at that. Now, tariff reductions are important, but they really don't mean a lot if you are facing uh, other challenges in getting your goods to, to the market. Um, I think, you know, the, the one great thing about the agreement is that it also seeks to address things called non-tariff barriers. Differing standards, uh, duplicative uh, testing, unreasonably onerous labeling or certification requirements are just a few examples. And, you know, there are always legitimate reasons for governments, um, health or safety reasons for governments to implement these kinds of uh, requirements and regulations. But when those uh, start to hinder trade and, and there is no justifiable reason for them, that's when you may be facing a non-tariff barrier. The CKFTA encourages the use of internationally accepted standards. It requires early notification and publication of technical regulations, and it creates committees to address these types of barriers. Uh, there is of course, also a dispute settlement process under the agreement that uh, can ensure that tariff reductions are not undermined by any unjustified non-tariff barriers. And if you are facing these types of barriers, whether that's in Korea or, or elsewhere, we really want to know about it. We can raise these with our federal colleagues uh, and we can advocate to have them addressed. Next slide, please. Okay, this is a screenshot of something called the Canada Tariff Finder. It is, uh, is a website, it is a very easy tool to use and I strongly encourage you to take a look at it if you haven't done so already. Uh, what this tool does is it lets you know what sorts of tariffs your products will face in markets where Canada has a free trade agreement. Uh, so that includes South Korea, of course. You, if, if you're looking at a market that, is, that, that uh, Canada does not yet have an FTA with, then you can use the World Trade Organization tariff uh, tool to, do, to look into that. Um, but in terms of this tool, it's very user-friendly. All you need to know is, it is, as you can see on the screen, whether you're exporting or importing, and then you just need to choose the right country. Of course, I've, I've got Poland there. I should have put Korea for this uh, presentation. My apologies, and the product that you're interested in exporting or importing. Now, when it comes to uh, that product, you can use either your HS code, if you know it, your harmonized systems code, uh, or a keyword. And once you click find, it may ask you a couple more questions just to make sure it fully understands which product you are talking about, and then you're off and running. Uh, once you do that, what it will show you is, if we're talking about Korea, it will show you your product. It will show you the rate that your product faces in 2022, if you're searching right now. It will also show you the phase out for uh, that product, if, if applicable, if there are any more tariff reductions that will happen uh, in the future. And finally, it will show you the rate, uh, the, that MFN rate that I mentioned earlier. So you can compare what sort of preference, uh, preferential rate that you are getting under the CKFTA versus your competitors that don't have that preferential access. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, the last thing I'm going to mention uh, on goods when it comes to the CKFTA is just a bit of a guide, uh, things that you wanna keep in mind when you, if you may be seeking to, to export under the agreement. Uh, the first is of course, checking the tariff preference, which I've already covered. The next thing that you need to know is whether or not your good meets the rules of origin. To be able to take advantage of any of those preferential tariffs, you need to be able to show that it meets the, the applicable rules of origin. Uh, if your good is wholly obtained in Canada or Korea, then you're probably not going to have any problems. But if that product uh, contains 
inputs from outside of Korea or Canada, uh, we may have to look at whether it meets those rules. And sometimes it's true, they can be complex. There are product specific rules of origin, but the good thing is that we're here to provide some guidance on this. And I'll also talk about a, another tool in a second here. Now, if let's say that you've got a preferential tariff rate in hand and that you think that your product meets those rules of origin, you will not automatically receive preferential access uh, just because you qualify. In, in the case of the CKFTA, producers or exporters must claim that preference. And in order to do that, you need a certificate of origin. Uh, under the CKFTA, that certificate of origin must be completed by an exporter or producer. Uh, it doesn't need to follow a prescribed format. Uh, it must be in writing, which can include electronically. Uh, it must contain a minimum set of data requirements, and it can apply to a single shipment of goods or multiple shipments of identical goods uh, over a certain period of time. Now, that may sound overwhelming, I know, but there is some good news. To be sure how another country's customs administration will treat your goods upon arrival, you can apply for what is called an advanced ruling. These are probably one of the most effective trade facilitation tools in Canada's FTAs. They can help expedite customs clearance. Uh, they can provide you with certainty about how a customs administration will treat your product at the border before you even ship it. So if you, you, if you use this tool, you can avoid situations where you ship your product thinking that you're going to get a certain rate and then have a different rate applied at the border. Uh, these, these are part, they are built into the CKFTA and most of Canada's other FTAs. They are binding on the customs authority and they will let you know if your good has been classified right and whether it meets those rules of origin. Again, this is something we can, we can help you with. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, that's it for goods. I'm just going to talk quickly about services here. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is that the CKFTA uses what is called a negative list approach. And this means that all services are covered by the agreement unless parties take exceptions or reservations. So check the agreement or, or better yet, have someone like me do it and make sure that your service is covered by the agreement. Now, like all of Canada's FTAs, there are some core obligations with respect to services. The first is that your service should get no worse treatment than South Korea provides services from its other FTA or WTO partners. This is known as most favored nation treatment. And of course applies for Korean service providers who may be looking to operate in BC or Canadian market. Uh, it should get the same treatment as other domestic service providers. This is known as national treatment. Parties should not be imposing restrictions on other, uh, uh, on the quantity or types of service, uh, sorry, the types of entities that can be supplying those services. And services, one, one very important uh, element, of course, of the agreement is just like with goods, service providers can benefit from improved access commitments. Uh, and when it comes to Korea, this may include things like professional services, foreign legal consultancy, uh, commercial education and training, research and development, environment and business services. And finally, countries, uh, parties cannot impose local presence or residency requirements as a condition of the cross-border supply of a service. So those are some of the core provisions. There are a couple of other things that may benefit you as a service provider as well. Uh, things like temporary entry provisions. This makes it easier for you to enter the market temporarily uh, as a business visitor or an investor or a highly skilled professional. Now, it's important to note that this doesn't replace the visa process, but, uh, and, and of course, there are also some exceptions and reservations, as I've noted on the screen here, to be aware of. Uh, not all professional, um, highly skilled professionals are covered, for example, but again, this is, this is something we can walk you through. Uh, and the last thing I'll mention here is just government procurement. So businesses under this agreement can compete equally with domestic suppliers in Korea and Canada as well. It's reciprocal, of course, for government procurement contracts covering covered uh, goods and services above set 
dollar thresholds. So in the case of the CKFDA, this covered central government agencies procurement, and those thresholds are 100 million won in Korea and $100,000 in Canada. And this really builds on the, the commitments that Canada and Korea have already uh, had already taken under the WTO agreement on government procurement. Okay, next slide, please. This is my, my last slide. I just want to say something quickly about uh, investment. And, you know, the, this is something, the provisions on investment of the CKFDA may also uh, benefit you as well. Uh, there, this really has, has been designed to give investors a more transparent and predictable investment environment and really help to mitigate any risks associated with investing in South Korea and Canada. Now, among other things, these, this chapter provides protection against discriminatory and arbitrary treatment, uh, protection from expropriation without prompt and adequate compensation, and of course, access to a dispute settlement process if you feel that you or your investment undertaking have been discriminated against. And, uh, you know, the core obligations with respect to investment are really mere the ones that I just went through on services, uh, things like national treatment, so parties uh, will treat each other's investors no worse than their own, and most favored nation, if one party gives an investment from another country better treatment, they will apply that to Canadians as well, and, and, so, and similarly to South Korea, and minimum standards of treatment for investors, and of course temporary investment, sorry, temporary entry also applies for investors as I just went over. Uh, last slide, please. I know I've covered a lot in a very short period of time. Uh, of course, uh, the Q and A function is there to uh, to answer any questions. Uh, and um, you know, please feel free to contact me at the contact information that is up on the screen here as well. Um, I, I know that Derek did mention that uh, South Korea has indicated an interest in joining the CPTPP as well. Uh, and of course, if that application is successful, it will provide another layer of preferential access between Canada and Korea that um, you know may differ and, and be better in some ways than the access that is already provided under the CKFTA. Uh, and of course, we're monitoring that closely. In the meantime, though, if, if leveraging the CKFTA or, or any FTA is something that you are interested in, please contact me and I'll make sure that you get the assistance that you need. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> I will just keep talking. So our next speaker is here to speak about the trade ecosystem and trends in Yonggi province. Mr. Yi Gae-yeol serves as the director of the Global Trade Department of the Gyeonggi Business and Science Accelerator, GBSA which focuses on realizing innovative employment creation by enhancing the competitiveness of small and medium-sized companies of Gyeonggi province and promoting cutting edge R&D through comprehensive and systematic support systems. Please take it away, Mr. Lee. Hello. Yeah, hello. Uh, 먼저 한국말로 이렇게 발표하게 돼서 이해를 좀 구하겠습니다. 뭐제 옆에 그 아주 우수하신 그 통역을 하시는 분이 계시기 때문에 통역을 믿고서 한국말로 발표를 하도록 하겠습니다. Good morning, everyone. Let me first ask for your understanding that I'm speaking in Korean and speaking through an interpreter. Uh, My name is E. K. Yeol, uh, presenter of this session. Um, serving as director of Global Trade Department at GBSA, Gyeonggi Business and Science Accelerator. 저는 이 자리에서 최근 그 한국의 무역 통계 자료를 좀 보면서 
경기도 무역의 특징과 향후 캐나다와의 그 교역의 발전을 위한 방안에 대해서 좀 말씀드리고 싶습니다. Today I'm going to review some trade statistics of Korea. <웃음> I'm sorry. To review <웃음> 경기 provinces trade uh, trade trends and suggest some ideas about developing our bilateral trade with Canada and British Columbia. 먼저 전년도에 한국 그 수출 한 수출 구조를 먼저 보시게 되면은 그 대기업이 전체 수출의 6, 70%를 차지하고 저희 중소기업은 18.2%를 점유하고 있는데 우리 경기도는 이좀 상태가 더 심해서 대기업 의존도가 굉장히 높고요. 중소기업들은 여전히 많은 기업들이 그 수출을 하고는 있지만 실질적으로 수출에서 차지하고 있는 비중은 18.2% 정도밖에 되지 않습니다. So when we look at the trade statistics nationwide, South Korea is a very export-oriented country, and most of this export is covered by large conglomerates or major-sized companies. They they represent more than half of South Korea's export, and SME, small and medium-sized enterprises, accounts only for 18.2 percent. And when it comes to Gyeonggi province, Gyeonggi province is even more dependent on large conglomerates than the than the entire nation. 네, 전체적으로는 저희가 9만 6천 개의 무역하는 기업이 있는데 이 중에서 3만 2천 개, 즉 3분의 1이 경기도에 위치하고 있습니다. South Korea has about 96,000 uh, trading enterprises, and one third, about one third of these, are located in Gyeonggi province. 그, 최근 4개년간의 무역 통계 자료를 보면은 2018년에 어, 수출과 수입이 가장 정점을 찍었고요. 그리고 코로나로 인해서 2019년, 20년은 가장 바닥을 찍었습니다. 그리고 저 작년에 2021년도에 다시 이게 그 올라가서 그 역대 최대의 어 무역을 기록했으며 이 무역 기록은 그 세계에서 여덟 번째의 가장 큰 무역 대국이 되었습니다. And if you continue to look at the trade statistics over the past four years, in 2018, both of South Korea's export and imports culminated. And dropped in 2020 uh, dramatically because of the COVID-19 outbreak. And in the last year, we succeeded in rebounding in both our trading and to reach another peak and to become world's top one of world's top eight trading com trading country. 그 옆에 도표에서 보시는 대로 경기도는 어, 경기도도 역시 가장 높은 무역 실적을 이루었는데 보면은 좀그 우리 한국 전체하고 좀 다른 것은 경기도는 좀 무역 적자가 좀 심각하게 좀 커져가고 있다라는 부분입니다. 이 부분은 이따 별도로다가 왜 그런지 이유를 설명해 드리도록 하겠습니다. And if you continue to look at the table, uh, look at the table on the right side, Gyeonggi Province also recorded last year the highest level ever of trade volume. But unfortunately, our deficit has deepened. I'm gonna come back to this and come back to this later to explain why. 그 경기도가 무역하고 있는 주요 그 트레이드 파트너들은 네 개국을 이렇게 뽑아 보면 중국과 미국, 일본과 베트남 이사 개국인데 그 경기도도 동일하게 이사 개국의 주요 무역 파트너입니다. So. Our top four trade partners in terms of trade volume are China, United States, Japan, and Vietnam. And Gyeonggi province also has the same top four trade partners as the entire nation. Uh, 
The entire Korea is like half dependent on these top four trade partners. And when it comes to Gyeonggi province, we are even more dependent on these top four trade partners because the uh, trade with these top four countries accounts for 64.1%. 전체적으로는 중국 의존도가 상당히 높은데 우리나라 전체적으로는 23.9%지만 경기도는 32.8%라는 아주 전반적으로 한 3분의 1 정도가 중국에 의존하고 있습니다. We are particularly dependent on China. If you look at the number 23.9% Chinese dependency to China of the entire South Korea. And compare this number to 32%, almost one third of Gyeonggi province's dependency on China. And the reason is because. Most of Gyeonggi province's businesses are manufacturing businesses, and these businesses have uh, factories in China, and they are doing processing as a part of their trading activities. Gyeonggi 그, 그에 이어서 자동차, 석유화학 제품들이 그 주요 아이템들이 되겠습니다. Now you guys are looking at top 10 key trade items of Korea. If you look at exports, semiconductors represent the absolute majority of South Korea's export, followed by automobile and petroleum products. 반면에 수입은 그 크루드 오일이 가장 많고요. 그 다음에 그 반도체하고 반도체 장비들인데 이 부분도 반도체를 많이 수출하는데 또 반도체를 많이 수입을 하고 있습니다. 이 부분은 그 해외에서 생산된 것을 다시 가져오는 것도 있고 또한 반도체 장비들 부분들은 반도체 생산을 위해서 그 들어가는 장비들이기 때문에 이 부분도 역시 수입에서 많은 그 내용들을 차지하고 있습니다. Our biggest import items include crude oil, semiconductor, and semiconductor equipment. Uh, because we export a lot of semiconductors, we have to import many semiconductor equipment, and we also have to import semiconductor products that we pro uh, that South Korean companies produ produce overseas. Uh, 경기도 경기도는 그 앞서 보시는 이 도표에서 그 피트롤리움 프로덕트를부터 시작해 가지고 그 해양 구조물까지는 경쟁력이 그 많은 산업이 분포돼 있지 않고 실질적으로 세마이 반그 반도체하고 자동차 그 다음에 평판 디스플레이 이런 쪽이 경기도의 강점 있는 산업이 되겠습니다. And when it comes to uh, the situation of Gyeonggi Province, uh, Gyeonggi Province is not very productive in semi, uh, in petroleum products or synthetic resins or maritime industry because they are not major industries of Gyeonggi Province. Our major items include semiconductors, automobile parts, flat panel displays, and sensors, computers, and wireless devices. Uh, 지금서부터는 그러면은 한국과 캐나다의 무역 현황에 대해서 잠시 좀 보고 그리고 어떻게 이 양국 간의 교육 발전을 할 것인가에 대해서 말씀을 드려보도록 하겠습니다. Let me now move on to bilateral trade of Korea and Canada. Uh, 2021년도 As of 2021, our bilateral trade volume is 13.1 billion. Uh, 한국 전체의 무역액의 1% 정도 되는 금액입니다. This represent about 1% of South Korea's total trade volume. 그래서 이게 수출로 보면은 한 캐나다는 한국의 18위의 파트너고 수입에서 보면은 25위의 파트너가 되겠습니다. And Canada is Korea's 18th biggest export partner. And 25th biggest import partner. 
이 131억 불 중에서 우리 경기도하고 캐나다의 그 무역액은 그 15억 불이 됩니다. And out of this 13.1 billion, Gyeonggi province accounts for just 1.5 billion US dollars. 아까 제가 전체 한국 무역액에서 캐나다 비중이 1%라고 했는데 이번 경기도에 이걸 좁혀서 경기도에서 보면은 경기도 전체 무역액에서 캐나다하고의 무역은 또 반이 반이 줄어든 0.5%를 차지하고 있습니다. 굉장히 부진한 상태입니다. The representation of Canada in Gyeonggi province's trade volume is only a mere 0.5%, another half of Korea's uh, Canada's representation in Korea's total trade volume. 그러면 한국이 캐나다로 수출하는 아이템을 가장 많은 부분을 차지하고 있는 것이 자동차입니다. The major export item, the biggest export item from Korea to Canada is cars. 그 나머지 부분들은 석유 화학 제품이라든가 철강석 철강과 관련돼 있는 제품들이 전체적으로 61%를 차지하고 있습니다. And other 60 about other about 60% include steel products and petroleum products. 그 아까 제가 말씀드린 경기도가 캐나다하고의 무역이 무역액이 적은 이유는 이 도표에서 보듯이 경기도의 산업의 특징과 강점은 반도체인데 실질적으로 캐나다의 반도체 수출이 아주 미미하기 때문입니다. And now you can understand why Gyeonggi do, uh, why Canada represent only a mere part in Gyeonggi do's trade volume because Gyeonggi do's major export item, Gyeonggi province's major export item is semiconductors, and we don't export a lot of semiconductors in Canada. 반면에 캐나다로부터 저희가 수입하고 있는 아이템들은 그 광물들하고 원료들, 그 다음에 농수산 식품들. 이런 쪽들이 주 메이저가 되고 있고 대략 78% 정도 되고 있습니다. Major items we import from Canada include raw materials, minerals, and agricultural products. These three items account for 78% of our total import. 그래서 양국의 어떤 비즈니스를 그 활성화 시키려고 본다면 지금 현재로서는 비즈니스 아이템들이 굉장히 제한적이라고 볼 수가 있습니다. So I would like to say that we are doing only a limit. We are having very limited items of uh, to trade as we move as we try to develop our business relations of the two countries. So 이를 발전시키기 위해서 다음의 방법들에 대해서 좀 제안을 드리며 설명을 드리겠습니다. So let me elaborate on four points as we move uh, as we look to develop our bilateral trade relationship. 첫 번째는 그 중소기업들의 무역을 확대시켜야 된다라는 것입니다. 그 앞서 설명드렸지만 경기도는 중소기업이 차지하고 있는 비중이 97%가 넘습니다. 이 기업들이 현재 캐나다하고의 비즈니스 관계를 형성하는 데는 굉장히 어려움이 있는데 그 가장 어려움 중에 하나가 캐나다에 대한 정보가 부족하다라는 것이고요. 그리고 정보가 부족하다 보니까 자연적으로 파트너 발굴이 어렵다라는 것입니다. 그 이런 두 가지 어려운 상황에서 중소기업이 아무래도 규모가 작은데 자기 시간과 비용을 원거리인 캐나다에 시간과 비용을 드리는 데 있어서 많은 부담을 가지고 있습니다. 그래서 이 부분들에 대해서 좀더 해결 방법들을 찾아야 된다라는 것입니다. My first suggestion is to increase trade with small and medium enterprises. As I mentioned before, 97% of enterprises in Gyeonggi province is at, are small and medium size. They have very limited access to Canadian market because they have limited access of information and limited access to partnership in Canada. So if we find some solutions to assist them, it will be a big help for these uh, small and medium enterprises. Uh, 그 이거는 캐나다의 입장에서 그 한국을 동남아시아를 진출하는 하나의 교두보로서 잘 활용을 해달라는 것입니다. Secondly, I would like to suggest that Canadian businesses use South Korea 
as a stepping stone to enter the ASEAN Southeast Asian market. 한국은 아무래도 아세안 국가들하고 지리적으로도 가깝고 문화적으로도 그 동질감이 있는 지역이기도 합니다. 그리고 이미 한국은 아세안 아세안은 한국의 제 2의 비즈니스 그 경제 블록입니다. 그래서 실질적으로 이미 많은 그 아세안 지역에 이미 한국으로서 많은 네트워크들을 마케팅을 할수 있는 네트워크, 서로 협력을 할수 있는 네트워크들이 이미 잘 구축이 되어 있기 때문입니다. Uh, South Korea has very strong relationship with ASEAN countries. Uh, we are close geographically and culturally. And ASEAN already consists the second biggest economic block of South Korean economic co cooperation. And South Korean companies have a large network with ASEAN communities. So it will be very helpful for help for uh, Canadian businesses to enter the ASEAN market. 그래서 그 캐나다가 독자적으로 이 아세안을 진출하는 것도 하나의 방법이겠지만 이미 잘 구축되어져 있고 프로젝트가 진행되고 있는 한국과의 비즈니스 협력을 통해서 동반 진출하는 방법이 그 한국과의 교역을 늘릴 수 있는 그두 번째 방법이 될 것입니다. So I would like to suggest that Canadian businesses uh, join hand with South Korean business community in joint project in ASEAN region. 그세 번째로 제가 제가 드리고 싶은 것은 그 최근에 코로나 상황에서 경험했듯이 글로벌 공급망 부분에 대한 불안 부분들을 상호 협력을 통해서 그 해소할 수 있는 비즈니스 영역이 있다라는 것입니다. And my third suggestion is about the global supply chain as we witness it during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we need to cooperate to resolve instability of global supply chain. 그 우리 한국 정부에서 최근 발표한 자료로 보면은 글로벌 공급망 리스크에 직면하고 있는 품목이 한 1,800가지가 넘는다고 합니다. 그래서 한국 정부로서는 이 품목에 대해서 여러 가지의 해결 방법을 통해 가지고 그이 리스크를 줄이려고 지금 시도하고 있는데 이 1,800 까지 품목 중에서 캐나다를 하고의 협력을 통해 가지고 해결될 수 있는 아이템이 분명히 있을 겁니다. 그래서 이 아이템들에 대해서는 상호 긴밀하게 소위 협의를 통해 가지고 그 서플라이 체인을 바꾸는 방법들을 좀 검토해 볼수 있고 이거 자체가 단지 무역을 통해서 서로 사고 파는 것으로 국한되는 것이 아니고 그 서로의 강점이 있는 그 원부자재 내지는 기술을 병합해 가지고 뭐양 지역에서 생산을 통해 가지고 해결하는 방법도 그 중에 하나가 될 것입니다. So, according to the recent reports of South Korean government, more than 1,800 items are affected by the recent global supply chain risk. Uh, the South Korean government is doing uh, many efforts to mitigate this risk, and I certainly believe that some of these items. Uh, the risks for some of these items can be resolved by cooperation with Canada. It is not just about trading items, but uh, we can actually combine our businesses and materials that we have advantage from each side so that we can uh, explore some ways to mitigate these risks. 마지막으로는 그 새로 부각되고 있는 신산업과 그 신산업의 R&D를 성유, 서로 공유하고 또 그거를 상용화하는 노력들을 그 양국이 협력을 하는 방법입니다. So my last suggestion to develop bilateral trade between South Korea and Canada is to cooperate for joint research and development projects and joint commercialization projects. 앞서서 캐나다 측에서도 프레젠테이션을 통해서 말씀해 주셨는데 그 앞으로의 시대가 디지털 전환이 급속도로 진행되고 있고 그뭐 코로나가 그것을 더 가속시켰습니다만은 그리고 또 친환경적인 부분들에 대한 산업이 앞으로 각광받는 산업이 될 수가 있고 또이두 가지 산업의 베이스에는 최근에 그 미래 성장 산업인 4차 산업들이 바탕하고 있는데 이 부분은 캐나다하고 우리 한국이 역점을 두고 있는 산업 부분이 되겠습니다. As our previous presenters mentioned, digital transition is 
being accelerated, especially by this recent COVID-19 pandemic, and eco-friendly industries are in the limelight. And these industries of fourth industrial revolution uh, are priorities in both of our countries. I am certain that there are a very huge uh, area of cooperation in these new industries between our two countries, especially in some, in some industries, including hydrogen, electric cars, and battery. South Korea has uh, advantages in commercialization technologies. So I believe that if, we, if our two countries join hand, we can certainly expand this new market. 네, 이상에서 발표를 마치겠습니다. 감사합니다. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Director Lee, for your fascinating presentation. You've certainly highlighted some excellent uh, trade and investment opportunities and, and areas where we can work together. Next, I would like to introduce Ms. Yeom Sera, who serves as the Korean English interpreter and translator of the governor of Gyeonggi province. In addition, she is involved in the management of provincial FDI projects. She is going to speak on opportunities for trade and investment in Gyeonggi province. The virtual floor is yours, Ms. Yeom. So let me, before starting, let me ask for your understanding. We are having some, uh, we are dealing with some technical issue. While they are working on getting that presentation up, I will just remind everyone to continue to use the Q&A function. Uh, lots of questions have been coming in and uh, I think they are getting answered live, but um, we, we uh, have lots of capacity to, to continue to answer your questions. And uh, as I mentioned, we'll have some time later to, uh, to discuss those as well. All right, we are good. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Ben. Um, it is my pleasure to speak here before you today, at both as a presenter and an interpreter. Um, let me start with a quick quiz. Have you ever heard what Gyeonggi province literally means? It literally means the province surrounding the capital Seoul. This Gyeonggi province is filled with vast investment opportunities. So if you're interested in growing your business or looking for somewhere to develop your brilliant ideas, Please pay attention to this presentation. Just one or two hour flight away from Northeast Asia's major cities, including Beijing, Tokyo, and Shanghai, Gyeonggi province is surrounded by a huge market comprising 1.6 billion population and a combined GDP of $21 trillion or a quarter of the entire gross world product. Gyeonggi province also features ideal transportation infrastructure. We offer access to two international airports, as well as two international seaports, plus 
19 expressways and eight railways, and in the near future, high-speed metropolitan railways known as GTX. So the product you manufacture here can be transported quickly, not only throughout Korea, but also to all parts of the world. Because of this excellence, Gyeonggi province is, also has the nation's largest economically active population of 7.4 million people, including highly skilled human resources. In terms of enterprises as well, Gyeonggi leads the nation with over 870,000 SMEs, as well as many creative and innovative startups in diverse industries that can collaborate with yours. For this reason, it is natural that Gyeonggi province is already being chosen as an investment destination by many foreign companies. To date, about 3,000 foreign firms have successfully established operations in our province, investing a total of $30 billion. In fact, Gyeonggi is home to world-leading South Korean companies such as Samsung, LG, SK Hynix, and Hyundai Kia. And renowned foreign companies that work with these companies also have invested, and they are all successfully operating in Gyeonggi province. As you can see in this map, Global enterprises such as LAM Research, Continental, Bosch, HP, Linde, Merck, and Alvok have all achieved remarkable growth here. And I hope the Canadian businesses can be the next. Gyeonggi province is probably home to eight foreign company exclusive industrial complexes. These complexes provide reliable business sites for global investors. As of 2020, these complexes housed 98 foreign companies, include employing a total of 10,000 employees and generating a combined revenue of 6.9 billion US dollars. And actually, I wish I could share with you a success story of some of your Canadian friends here, but unfortunately, I have to point out that Canada is underrepresented in our industrial complexes. So let me encourage you all to seek opportunities here to test your ideas or commercialize your proprietary technologies. Tenants of foreign company exclusive industrial complexes can enjoy dramatic lease cut, five-year duty exemption of your capital goods, goods as well as 50 to 100% 100, 100 discount of acquisition and property taxes depending on your business sector and investment size. On top of this, we also provide customized one-stop administrative services to foreign companies so that we can facilitate your business success. So discover our excellent hardware and software that you can use as a test bed before entering the huge Asian market. We truly are an ideal stepping stone for your global market entry. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your presentation, Sarah. There are some exciting trade and investment opportunities in Gyeonggi province for sure. And uh, hopefully we can uh, improve on that underrepresentation that you just mentioned, uh, as well as facilitating some partnerships through today's session. Our final speaker for today is Nick McLennan, who is an export advisor with the Export Navigator Program. Nick is going to speak about programs and supports for BC exporters. Having founded two companies in his youth, Nick knows the unique challenges and opportunities that younger entrepreneurs face. Alongside his experience founding and growing his own companies, Nick also has experience promoting Canadian goods and services abroad from working as a trade commissioner with Global Affairs Canada. This solidarity with youth entrepreneurship and unique experience in the export sector makes Nick a highly valuable resource to his clients, allowing him to provide effective contacts, resources, and guidance. Over to you now, Nick. Awesome, thanks for the very warm introduction, Ben. 
Uh, awesome. So my name is Nicholas. I'm an export advisor with uh, the Export Navigator program. Some of you are probably wondering, what is Export Navigator? And uh, after all the information that we got today on the opportunities and some of the challenges and strategies to overcome them uh, with regards to the Korean market, you're probably wondering, my goodness, where do I start? Well, if you're a BC small, medium, and, uh, or medium-sized enterprise, you start right here with us. So if we go over the next slide, please. So what is the Export Navigator program? What is it that we do? Well, we help BC businesses grow by guiding them through the export process. As you can see here, we've helped over 650 businesses based in BC grow their business beyond BC's borders. So that includes across Canada, Pacific Northwest, and markets like South Korea. We help folks by helping them understand the export process and making sure that we put them in touch with the right resource at the right time. Next slide, please. What does that mean? Well, that means we have a team of advisors located throughout rural British Columbia that help you develop an export plan and help you walk through that process. We sit down with you, we help determine where it is your business is at right now and where it is it needs to be to export successfully. From there, we help you develop a strategy that goes at your own pace and addresses the unique needs that your business has. And then from there on in, we help sort of act as a guide walking along that journey with you, making sure that you address any challenges that come up. Um, of course, COVID was a big one, and we helped a lot of businesses access some of the COVID-related support resources available to them so that they could not only just survive, but also thrive. Um, with regards to South Korea and whatnot, we helped put you in touch with folks uh, like the BC Trade and Investment Office, um, or Global Affairs Canada, and we facilitate those connections at the right time. So you go pre-vetted and you can go with the confidence knowing that you are ready. You're at that stage to take it to the next level. So as a result of participating in the program, you get that one-on-one -on -one consulting service from your local export advisor, hours of free consulting services. Um, we work at your own pace. You get the export readiness assessment. And um, after working with your export advisor for a bit, You've got that export plan so you feel confident moving forward. Next slide, please. So you can see we've got a diverse team located throughout rural British Columbia. Uh, our services are limited to areas outside Metro Vancouver and Greater Victoria at this time. So as you can see here, we cover just about every corner of the province. As well, we've got specialty advisors for those businesses owned, uh, majority owned, by uh, folks that identify as either women, youth, youth being 29 and under. Uh, or Indigenous. Next slide, please. So Wild Remedies, uh, Small Business in Kelowna that's participated in the program. And as you can see here, uh, we really help uh, folks from all walks of life, whether you're a startup or whether you're already uh, sort of well along your business journey, export successfully. Next slide, please. The Squalum Botanicals, another one, an Indigenous-owned company and rural British Columbia. Um, and we help them create an effective export plan. So they've been able to go from a small locally oriented business to one that is selling beyond BC's borders successfully. Next slide, please. So who can apply? Well, as I said, uh, it's, right now the program is limited to those small medium-sized enterprises outside Metro Vancouver and Greater Victoria. So if you're in rural British Columbia, um, we take uh, clients from any, uh, any sector, uh, as you can see, we've got a very diverse portfolio, any size and at any stage of exporting. So if you're uh, you know, looking at just getting into Alberta to start, perhaps you just want to get your feet wet, or if you're looking to sell to South Korea and uh, you know, hit the ground running, we help all folks out in terms of planning things out effectively and making sure that you export right the first time. So you're not falling into those common pitfalls, you're not wasting time, you're not losing money. Um, and as a result, you've seen some of the uh, lovely testimonials that our clients have provided with regards to our services. So if you are eligible and if you are interested in learning more about how to export successfully the first time round, next slide please. Uh, my contact information is here, nicholas at exportnavigator.ca. You'll also find us online um, on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, uh, Export Navigator, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you and helping you along your export journey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. I know you'll uh, make some new connections after that presentation. 
Okay, so that's uh, that's it for our uh, formal presentations and speakers for today. Um, we have fielded numerous questions in the Q and A so far, and many of those were quite specific. Uh, so, so I know some of the speakers have responded directly to those uh, in the quite in the Q and A box. Um, but there are a few minutes left. We we do have some time left. Uh, if there are any uh, additional questions for our speakers, uh, we have a of course not only your BC representatives, but also uh, those providing trade supports and uh, a wealth of representatives from Gyeonggi province. <clears throat> um, there is a question that has just come in uh, through the Q&A and this would be for you, Nick, and that is, is there any sort of fee for the Export Navigator service? Can you please advise? No, um, our services are completely free, so we're jointly funded by both the province of British Columbia and the uh, federal government of Canada. So our services are accessible to all those small businesses that are eligible, and they're completely free. So again, hours of free consulting services available to you. Thank you, Nick. Okay, so I'll just continue to watch that just to see if anything else comes in. Um, in the meantime, I just want to open up the floor and allow any of our presenters uh, to add anything else that they may want to say um, or respond to anything uh, that their fellow presenters have, uh, have mentioned today. Uh, we, we have a few minutes left to, to, uh, to do that. Hi, man. Um, so I try to uh, answer most of the questions that came in uh, with the private message. However, uh, please note that we do have our separate sector managers in our office who would be more than happy to answer sector specific questions, including myself. So if you can uh, please email that questions to me, I will distribute uh, amongst our um, you know, other commercial officers at the office and answer them um, accordingly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Derek. Any of other presenters, including those in Gyeonggi province who would like to add anything else? Uh, thank you for your uh, meeting today. Uh, I, I would like to uh, look forward to uh, a meeting uh, in face-to-face -face meeting as uh, soon after the uh, overcoming the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Gum. We, we, uh, I think we share that feeling. Uh, and as the Minister, Minister Chow mentioned in his uh, opening video as well, uh, it's certainly something that we look forward to. <clears throat> okay, well, uh, if there are no other questions at this point, then I'm going to close things off. Uh, as you can see, we are surrounded by a wealth of tools in our trade and investment uh, toolkit, uh, from insightful market intelligence uh, to on-the-ground expertise to the opportunities under the CKFTA to make you more competitive in, in both South Korea and in British Columbia and, and, and Canada. Uh, this is a, a collaborative effort and we are all here to support you. There are clearly some terrific opportunities for trade and investment in Gyeonggi province and we're very appreciative of our partners from Gyeonggi province and the Gyeonggi Business and Science Accelerator for joining us today. And uh, let's not forget about the videos that kicked off today's session highlighting Gyeonggi province and BC's efforts to uh, further pursue economic and government to government cooperation and exchanges in the areas of trade and the economy, uh, culture and arts and sports, uh, disaster response and safety, education, and of course, personnel exchanges. Please keep your eyes open. Uh, there will be a follow-up email with all of the presentations that uh, were provided today, as well as some other resources, uh, as well as a link to today's webinar. Um, there will also be future FTA free trade agreement sessions specifically directed to British Columbian businesses hosted by our ministry. 오늘 참여해 주셔서 감사합니다. 모든 스피커분들의 
기구에 감사드립니다. 곧 얘기할 수 있는 기회가 있기를 바랍니다. 건강하세요. That's it for today's webinar. I hope you found it useful. Thank you all for joining and a special thank you to all of our speakers for your contributions. We hope to hear from everyone soon. Take care.